really just realized today, we're one week away from the NBA regular season starting, and I haven't done enough in terms of NBA preview stuff and previewing this NBA season. So what I decided to do is preview every NBA team going into the season, give me my predictions for them, and I'm starting from the bottom. So my prediction for the 15th seed in the Eastern Conference is the Detroit Pistons. I'm sorry if you're a Pistons fan, but the main reason is they've made it clear that they're tanking. They've given away all of their good players. Not all of them. They still have a couple good veterans there. But they've given a lot of their good current players in terms of Luke Kennard and other guys like that. Guys that have been solid contributors for them. And they've gone young. And that's what they've needed to do. This Pistons team has been stuck as an 8-9 to nine seed every year for too long. And that's basically the worst place you want to be in the NBA. There are some teams that are stuck out of the playoffs year after year after year. So it could be worse. Especially if you're in the Western Conference, a team like the Kings. But the Pistons... It's about time that they bow them out for at least one year and start getting some young talent in here. And so that's why I have them at the very bottom. But I'm going to go through all the things that I see from them this season. Their best player all around is probably going to be Jeremy Grant. You know, that's not what you like to see. That's a big reason why they're going to be a 15 seed because I like Jeremy Grant. Don't get me wrong, but I don't like him as the best player in the league. You got Derrick Rose as well, who's probably the most talented player left right now, I would say in terms of where he's at right now in his career, but he's going to be coming off the bench. They already said with Killian Hayes being thrust into the starting lineup. So I think Jeremy Grant is a guy that's been very solid for playoff teams the last couple of years, for the Thunder, for the, who was he just on, the Nuggets. He's been very good for them. He's been a good contributor for them. So I think they'll be he'll be the best, Pistons' best all-around player in terms of helping winning basketball. I don't know if he'll be their, winning, their leading scorer. I think that'll be D. Rose or Blake Griffin, but he's a great defender, and I think at the end of the season, that will be the best player for the Pistons. Sixth man of the year for them, D. Rose. You know, we'll see how long they keep him. I would expect, another reason I don't have him as best player is because I expect that type of player in terms of D. Rose, a contender might try and get him by the time the trade deadline comes around. He'll probably be averaging like 17, 18 off the bench, maybe 16. Be a good be good, a good leader, good influence on Killian Hayes, but, you know, he's not going to be able to help this team win very much. And then the most surprising player that's going to have an impact, I believe in Jaleel Okafor. I'm a Duke fan. Just get that out there. So I might be biased, but I see this guy go out there and he gets buckets right away. And on a bad team like this that does not have scores as Blake Griffin and Derrick Rose very much out of their prime, and that's it. I think Julio Okafor is going to come in off the bench and he's going to give bucks. The only thing holding him back is going to be they're going to be looking to play young guys. But next we got Blake Griffin, and he's going to be the most disappointing player for them. And, and this is a guy that he was special. He was spectacular in his prime. But he's just had so many injuries that he's nowhere near what he was. And even before he started breaking down, I thought he was going too much to a perimeter game. Don't get me wrong. It's great to see that he's built a perimeter game, and he he has. He's a solid shooter now. He's a solid passer. He's a solid ball handler. And that makes him a decent to solid NBA player just based off that. And that's what he is at this point. He's a solid NBA player. But he's lost what made him special. What made him special was his athleticism. And second to that was his post play. So me... If I was Blake Griffin, I, or if I was coaching Blake Griffin or whatever, I would have told him to go more into that post play. I know that doesn't fit what the NBA is today, and that's probably why. That's definitely why he went away from post ups and went more to the perimeter. But you could post up not being having being broke down. We saw Tim Duncan at the end of his career, end of his career, still be able to get post buckets, and that man was a dog in the post. When I, as a Warriors fan watching him play up against the Warriors, they could not hold him the post. It wasn't just lob dunks. So, you know, I wish that man still posted up and stuff like that. But seeing as he basically is just a spot-up shooter and ball handler now, he's not special at that. So he's nearly not going to be a star player anymore, I don't think. But the Pistons, they've got young guys on the roster like Isaiah Stewart from Rochester. I've seen him. You know, he's probably still got another year to develop before he'll be a solid NBA player because he's a little undersized. He could shoot a little bit, but just coming into the NBA as a center, be able to make an impact as being slightly undersized is not easy. He's he's got he's built, don't get me wrong, but in terms of height and length, he's skilled as well. So he'll be, he's good, but I don't know if he'll be able to be great this year. They brought in Svi, who if you're like I've heard Lakers fan talk about how great he was going to be and we all know that. He's a borderline NBA player. He's a good shooter though. And then they got Musa from the Nets who's, you know, just had some moments. They're just taking chances on young guys have had moments. They took a chance on Josh Jackson, guy that was very top draft pick. I think he'll probably have a solid season. You know, he he's never gonna be what they expected him to be coming out of the draft. I never had super high hopes for him, but I had better hopes than what than what he's done. So hopefully for him, he'll have a good comeback year. And then Killian Hayes, 
who I think is a guy that is going to be given all the opportunity. They're throwing him in the starting lineup right away. And I like that draft pick. I like Killian Hayes a lot from what I've seen. But I'm not sure if he's going to be great his first year. I think he has a chance to be on the all-rookie team just because of how much he'll be able to run the offense. But skilled point guards, they it usually takes a while for them to develop. Like the last one I can remember, D'Angelo Russell. He looked like a bust his first year or two. Part of that was the system he was in. Part of that is just guys that aren't athletically ready for the NBA. Like Killian Hayes is pretty slender. I don't think athletically he's necessarily ready for the NBA. He's just all skills, but he's undersized. So I think it's going to take him a while to get used to that. Even Steph Curry, he wasn't a star as soon as he got to the league. It takes those type of guys a year or two to get used to the NBA athleticism, to bulk up a little bit, and all that. So Killian Hayes, I think he's really good. He'll show flashes, but I don't think he's going to be able to take over the league or anything like that his first year. And they brought Sadiq Bey, who we'll see. I don't know that much about him. And they've got Dwayne Casey coaching them, who I like. Hopefully they keep, you know, they keep him around to build up this team. I think he's good for this type of team. You know, the Raptors, when he took over, they were kind of a mess with Rudy Gay. They were, weren't horrible, but they weren't a good team. And then he built up a young core and nucleus with DeMar DeRozan. He really gave him the opportunity to play his game. Kyle Lowry, a, team, a player that was not seen as a star player at all, and he kind of put them, him in the position to be that. He built up a championship-level organization. So I hope they he, they keep him along for this rebuild, and hopefully they can start getting some winning going. But winning, I don't think it's going to happen this year with this team. But I don't think it's going with for that. I don't think they're even going for that, so they shouldn't be disappointed. But let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think the Pistons have a chance to be good? Drop a comment, like, and then subscribe. Yes, sir.